coin here. So I want to talk about native controller support for EtherGazer on emulators. Um, this is Bluestack emulator, probably the most popular emulator for, you know, Android gaming. So let's just get straight into it and talk about native controller support. So once you're in, you want to come to the option by clicking the little cog wheel, comes down to controls, and you are going to find controller control layout. Normally, this is actually turned off, so turn it on. But before, before that, you will need a Windows compatible controller, which supports X input or X input, direct X input. Okay, that's what X input means, direct input, right? So as long as you have a controller, what supports X input, right it will actually work right just a windows compatible controller you can also use a playstation controllers right but some of the older playstation controller you will need extra software to install compatible x input drivers for them to work right so keep that in mind almost any generic Windows controller or Xbox controller, you know, Xbox One, Xbox Series will work perfectly fine with it. So as long as you plug your controller in, whether by wire or Bluetooth, whatever, and Windows recognize it, then it will work. So demonstrate this. So as you can see here, I can change the buttons and this is just me pressing buttons on my controls and it's directly assigning the controller buttons in game. This is good because you get much better latency than assigning button inputs to a touch location on the screen in the emulator. That's what you do when you assign the buttons overlay on your on your emulator screen you're just kind of just pressing the technically pressing the phone screen but there is some latency it's not a lot but there is in some latency but with a direct controller pass through directly to the game right you get a much better response time much better and the game will feel a lot better because the developer obviously have tuned the game right for this particular configuration is probably the best, the best experience, like best response you're gonna get. Same thing with keyboard. You're gonna get like, these are the best response, the best you're gonna get, right? So let me just set back my buttons and my normal attack, it's just a layout overview of what I'm using. My normal attack is actually X. Then my skill one is A, my skill two is B. My skill three is Y. My dodge is right shoulder button. Ultimate is right trigger. Ult teammate ultimate skill one is up. Skill two is down. Lock on is left pressing down on the left analog stick. And the camera left and right is the right analog stick. And movement is the left analog stick. So make sure we save this. Now some bonus. And let's go in full screen for this. So as you can see here, my button layout is a little different. So if you're actually playing on an emulator, you will find that, well, let's take a look. The default layout Everything is very big and take up a lot of screen estate. So on your really fancy monitor, you probably want to see more of the game and it can be distracting, right? So you want to resize. As you can see, I've actually resized and moved them around, right? So you can change their size and you can change their transparency. 
You can grab and move them around. I'm not gonna move any of my things because I don't wanna mess them up, okay? <laughs> but you just, just work with me. You can just move them around to set them how you want. So you can get as much screen space and be more immersed. I mean, if you are gonna use a controller to get a more responsive game, you probably wanna be more immersed in the actual game by not having your screen filled with, well, oversized, you know, mobile phone tap areas, right? Which is perfectly fine. You want them to actually be bigger on a mobile phone screen because the mobile phone screen is so small and, you know, small fingers, tiny screen. So you make them as big as possible. But if you have a good size monitor, it's a lot of space and you have, you know, so you probably want to make them smaller. All right, so that's just a bonus. Let's go in and give them a test. And we're gonna go with our green girl because it's easy and nothing super special. No, and hmm. Osiris ready to strike. <clears throat> it's there we go. Your side again. And this is it. We're controlling with direct input. Simple as that. Alright. Bam, bam, bam. Very responsive. And you might have seen that little prompt right there. Normally, you'd have to assign a button to it, or you need to click the area to get the prompt off your screen. But with direct controller input, they have implemented that you just need to like press like X or any button, and it will actually progress those little prompts which might pop up in stories and so on and so forth so that's a nice extra feature you get there so it's very smooth very very smooth and easy to easy to deal with like gameplay is so much better control so much better you have a lot more control and it's very responsive with native controller setup i'm so happy we could win this together <clears throat> So we're gonna go back in there one more time to show a lot of features and a little technical information. So while you're actually in combat and you can access the pause, you notice you can access the control here. So you can always come in testing and you know adjust these to what you actually want them to be, what is more comfortable for you, right? As you can see here, you can adjust almost all the settings except the graphics settings so if you want to you know play around with it that what's most comfortable for you you can do it directly in combat just pause the game at any point all right now let's take a some technical look on blue stack here you want to <clears> take a break sorry right. so you break. when you press the little sorry. cog or the little drop down menu settings or the cog you go to the setting menu, right? And you go to gamepad. So, in Blue Star, for example, you want to make sure allow Blue Star to control, like, connect to your gamepad. If this is off, it's not gonna like interpret any of the controller calls, right? So you have to. I believe this comes on default. And another thing is. <clears throat> You want to set this to on. On auto, some games allows you to like toggle it on of an on and on switch, and BlueStack will recognize this and kind of automatically turn it on and off based on whether you toggle it on in the game. But in some games, it doesn't actually work, and you kind of need to come in here and just turn it on manually. And it will it will always be on at this point. Right, so make sure this is on in blue stack. Right. And you can come in here, and we're gonna go to the control editor. Right, so we have game path. Let's say we add X. Right, I'm gonna save, and we'll see what happens. No problem. Right. I'm here. So some emulators specifically the other emulator if you do have a button 
assign, right? Any controller button assign, then it's gonna kind of block any input what goes through the game. That's not the case with Blue Star. So you can actually assign extra button to do certain things. Uh, I think we got this one. Now let's reset. Now let's reset. So it was like this before. And we can let's reset it. And we're gonna just change this here and let's change this to like the right the right shoulder button. Well the left shoulder button. Right. Let's delete these. Take them off. Do you want to take a break? Sorry, I didn't bring any Click. dessert. Click. Unfortunately, we don't really have. I do like that instant full clear where we have. In Momo. We get rid of all of this. We don't need any of this. Go on the game. Yeah. You can assign them, but doesn't mean it's going to work, right? Because the emulator bypasses all of this, whatever you sign here is not going to work, even though you assign it. That means you can assign them anyways, and you can toggle on native controller support. But as long as native controller support, these, the, Sorry, the, the emulator will not dessert. like interpret these. It will just pass it straight through to the game. All right. And let's save the changes and that's it. Go back into full screen and let's just finish up. And that's it. That's all the technical know-how you actually need to get it to work. Press the button here. <clears throat> And this is so, this is so smooth, right? It's so responsive. And so it's like you're playing any, you know, action RPG or action game on your PC with the native controller support. Much more precise, especially movement is a lot better. All right. So that's pretty much it. It's very simple, very easy. And as far as I know, these are the two emulator that I use that actually supports native controller pass through directly to into the games, but actually support it. Hopefully this is gonna helpful and I'll see you later in the next video. Peace.